On July 16, 1969, three American astronauts, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins, began a rendezvous with history. Good luck and Godspeed. Ignition sequence start. Their rocket roared into space and headed for the moon. Four days later, the lunar module, named the Eagle, touched down on the Sea of Tranquility. Houston, uh, the Eagle has landed. Man was on the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And like explorers before them, they planted their flag on the lunar surface. They've got the flag up now, and you can see the stars and stripes. On this 40th anniversary of Apollo 11, we are honored to have with us the man who was holding that American flag, Buzz Aldrin. And Buzz, welcome to Fox News. That was News a proud Sunday. moment to be a military person and to salute that flag uh, uh, on the surface of the moon. I would think. Uh, I want to take care of some sad business first. As you know, Walter Cronkite yes. passed away Friday night. What are your thoughts about him as a man and also as someone who I think you'd agree helped sell the space program to the American people? Absolutely, he was the strongest supporter. There were other people, different networks, uh, Roy Neal, uh, Jules Bergman, uh, they've all passed away, but uh, Walter was the strongest, I think, and the, and the persistent one. Right from the very beginning, he supported all things that the astronauts uh, have done, and the uh, Scholarship Foundation, and the uh, Hall of Fame, and uh, things of that nature. But of course, uh, I, I think on this occasion, he's best remembered for being a little speechless with his glasses up on his forehead and uh, with Wally Shira kind of mopping his brow. You know, millions of people saw that, or some, a lot of people, but we didn't. We didn't see that till we got back on the carrier and we're on the carrier and they showed us the reaction of the crew, uh, to the crew to the people cheering all, and I just had an impulse to tap Neil on the so shoulder and say, hey, Neil, look up there. We missed the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to 40 years ago tomorrow. What has stayed with you? What do you remember most about your 21 and a half hours on the moon? What I want to remember most is the glance between Neil and myself with the engine shut off just those seconds after we touched down because we had just completed the most critical door opening for exploration uh, in, in all of humanity. We came along at just the right time, the, the three of us, all born in 1930, uh, to, to be given such a marvelous opportunity and uh, for me to accompany one of the best test pilots that's uh, uh, ever come along and demonstrated the X-15 and uh, I couldn't ask for uh, a better commander. When you first set foot on the moon, you famously called it magnificent desolation. Yes. Ta take us to the lunar surface. How can it be magnificent and desolate yeah. at the same time? Well, you know, uh, the comedians uh, sometimes like for me to describe that comedy is an absurdity thrown into a normal situation and then treated as if nothing else happened. Like, like when we were uh, cleared for liftoff, I said, Roger. Houston, we're number one on the runway. Well, that you got two of them right there in, in one sentence. Well, magnificence uh, is the achievement of humanity to be able to get there and for us to be a part of that, to carry that out. But the scene was so desolate, so totally lifeless. Uh, it probably hadn't changed much in uh, 100,000 years. Uh, the, the, the sun goes over in 14 days, gets hotter than and it gets colder. Uh, it's not a hospitable place. You have to really have a very compelling reason to invest in human habitation.